How Stressed Our Global Supply Chains. I'm joined today by David Simke Levy. He is Professor of Engineering Systems at MIT. Professor Simke Levy, welcome back. Thank you. Nice to be here again. Late last year, we talked about this concept of a stress test for supply chains. Could you please remind us exactly what that entails? The idea behind uh, a stress test is to identify hidden risk in the supply chain. I borrowed the terminology from uh, the financial crisis. After the uh, 2008 financial crisis, the federal government in the US, government in Europe established stress tests that banks need to take their business through uh, to make sure that they are ready for the next financial crisis. And I published a paper in April of last year saying we need the same for supply chain. And in fact, because my team at MIT developed such a stress test, I knew this is possible. Mm -hmm. And so is it a kind of simulation? Do you, how, how do you actually determine that, that, that a supply chain can stand up under the stress of various disruptions? So what we have developed and also implemented in uh, different uh, companies in a variety of industries, from uh, automotive at Ford, and Ford was happy to talk about that, uh, to high tech, to CPG, uh, is a digital twin. It's a simulation model of the supply chain that is focusing on two performance measures. One is what I call time to survive. How long can I match supply with demand without a specific facility, whether it's a manufacturing facility, a distribution facility, uh, a, a supplier, and so forth and so on. The second one is time to recover. For a given scenario, time to recover represents how long it takes for a specific facility to recover and come back to full operation. And we use this time to recover to estimate performance impact, either financial or operational. What is the impact during time to recover of a specific facility on revenue? on profit or on lost production. So you've had time to apply this test to a number of companies now, have you not? What have you learned so far? What can you generalize about the conclusions from these tests? I would say there are a few important insights. The first one is that risk is hidden in unexpected places. We have reported this even before the pandemic. But in the last 12 months, uh, as you pointed out, we have started implementing this across multiple companies. And again and again comes this insight that says the data and analytics can identify risk hidden in unexpected places in the supply chain. A lot of times, small suppliers that people don't pay attention to can impose the highest, largest risk on the supply chain. That's one. The second important insight is that risk is not necessarily associated with a specific geography. Just, just concentrating your supply chain in, in, say, North America or Asia does not guarantee resiliency. And in fact, uh, when we implemented uh, the stress test for a very large global supply chain, risk was everywhere. It was in North America, it was associated with supplier in Europe, and it was associated with suppliers in Asia. And the last uh, uh, insight that was uh, very important is that this type of stress test also identify not only challenges, but also opportunities. Because a lot of time what you find is that uh, for a specific component, for a specific supplier, time to survive is very long. Why is it very long? Because the company is sitting on a lot of inventory. Cutting inventory by 20 or 30% will not reduce significantly time to survive. As a result, stress tests focus, of course, on the challenges, but also, depending on the, the, the specific, may help identify cost and saving opportunities. Interesting conclusions. So it's no panacea for a company that thinks it can severely reduce 
supply chain risks just by reshoring or nearshoring, you're saying that's not the whole answer. That even if even if your supply chain is proximate to your to your markets, you're still facing challenges. Exactly. And in fact, we saw this last year in the food industry. If you think about what happened last year um, in North America for beef and pork, we saw that the pandemic uh, resulted in huge disruption to that industry. This industry is highly concentrated in North America. Mm -hmm. All the manufacturing and supply is uh, located in North America yet the disruption created a huge problem in this country. So just moving manufacturing from one region to another or from one country to another country does not guarantee resiliency. That's why stress tests are so important because it allows a company to test whether the supply chain is resilient and when it's not, where is the hidden risk? Now, you mentioned the automotive industry. Different situation there. Obviously, right now they are experiencing, as are other consumer electronics and high-tech industries, experiencing shortage of semiconductors. Would that is that something that would have come out in a stress test prior to this happening, and they would have realized that and been able to take some action against it, or are they simply captive to the fact that ninety percent of semiconductors come out of China, and that's just how you just have to deal with it? So we need to understand what happened in the chip manufacturing uh, industry that affected the automotive industry. Uh, What happened is a result of uh, automotive manufacturers at the beginning of of the pandemic adjusting their orders. They realized that demand is going down. Mm -hmm. They reduced their orders to tier one suppliers, tier one suppliers to tier two suppliers, all the way to the wafer manufacturing companies. What did the wafer manufacturing companies, uh, what did they do? They reallocated their capacity to other industries, for example, to game and electronic manufacturers. All of a sudden, as uh, the automotive manufacturers saw a significant increase in demand, they started ordering more, and all of them ordering at the same time. But lead time for chip manufacturing, for wafer manufacturing, is very long. You are talking about five to six months. As a result, it takes time to catch up. What we saw is an application of the bullwhip effect. All the automotive manufacturing companies, all of them are ordering at the same time. There is not enough capacity and lead time is very long. As a result, we see these uh, shortages. What I am saying is that data, analytics, and automation allow you to uh, identify these type of problems well in advance, and as a result, to adjust your strategy. The digital twin is one example, but here for what we saw in chip uh, manufacturing process require a more comprehensive review of a company supply chain. Would it be fair to say that the level of technology that is available to us today in terms of data analytics the digital twin, even artificial intelligence, makes this exercise possible in a way that it would not have been just a few years ago? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And in fact, what happened in the last 12 months, companies, executives started realizing that the technology, you mentioned data, analytics, and automation, can help them address some or many of the challenges that they have been seen in the market uh, mm-hmm. during the, the pandemic. So the pandemic created lots of problems, but one positive thing that came out of the pandemic is executives started realizing that visibility, digitization, analytics, and automation can accelerate the recovery process. So have you followed up on these companies? Have you seen them taking actual concrete action in response to their discovery of their, of their, <laughs> of their res- lack of resiliency as a result of this test? Have they been making improvements as a result? Uh, 
So, of course, everything is company specific, mm -hmm. but I have seen examples where companies ask a specific suppliers to make sure they have another facility in a different region. When they focus on this, these types of strategies, of course, you are talking about large suppliers. I have seen situations where companies change their inventory strategy to make sure that they have the right inventory level to mm -hmm. respond to uh, supply chain disruption. I have seen situations where companies are starting to look at product design in order to standardize components so that they can bring more volume to a supplier and as a result can ask the supplier to have another facility in a different region. The response is different for different companies, but this is the starting point. I'm working now, in fact, right after this interview with a very large high-tech manufacturing company where they have implemented the strategies, the stress tests that we are discussing. And today's meeting is about what changes they have applied because of the stress test. That is so heartening to know that, first of all, that we have this test available to us today in a way we didn't before, and it is actually leading companies to make real change to their supply chains in response to the current disruptions. David Simke Levy, always good to talk with you. Thank you so much for your insights today. Appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me.